Hey guys, HDV here and welcome back to a brand new video. Now, as we all know, the Crown Tundra is on its way. Don't really know when because, well, we haven't had any information about it really in a long time. So hopefully it gets released this year, fingers crossed. But anyway, obviously all the Pokemon in the new expansion past did get data mined. So today I'm going to be going over my team for the Pokemon Crown Tundra DLC. So if you're excited for the video, drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 750 likes. Leave a comment. What is your team going to be when you do go through the Crown Tundra? And subscribe if you're brand new. We do daily Pokemon content on this channel. With all of that out of the way though, let's get into the video. And I really hope that you enjoy. So, starting things off, this is the data mine. These are all the Pokemon that are confirmed to be in Pokemon Sword and Shield Crown Tundra because bloody Game Freak forgot to take that part out. You know, there, there's so much has been data mined <laughs> in the Crown Tundra. They just, just left it all in, really. Don't know why. <laughs> Someone's losing their job, that's for sure. Uh, but as you can see, there's a nice little selection of Pokemon. Obviously, the things that shoot out straight away, Gen 3 starters, all the legendaries, Nido King, Nido Queen, you know, a lot of pseudo legendaries are back. Really, really good choices of Pokemon to pick. But for my team, I'm not really using any legendaries because I'm guessing you're going to find that out at the end when you do all the, the, like the co-op raids and everything like that. So my team is going to consist of uh, just the normal Pokemon that you're hopefully going to be able to find as you transverse through the Crown Tundra. So my first Pokemon, oh, I've got to bring something with me. I can't go into the Crown Tundra with no one. So I'm bringing my hidden ability Gigantamax Cinderace. This bad boy is going to get me out of any sticky situation. Libero is such a good ability that just getting stabbed on any move I use, it's just so, so broken. I mean, we all remember the days of Greninja and the protein and the destruction that it caused. Cinderace is no different. This Pokemon is definitely going to help me out. Also, I don't want flashbacks of the Isle of Armor. Went into that with a level 10 Galarian Slowpoke, expecting bloody level cap to be there. It, it wasn't. It died to a level 60 Ambra straight away. So this time, coming prepared. So I'm going to bring like a level 60 Cinderace that's got a hidden ability. Gigant's Max. The whole shebang should get me off to a very, very nice start. A lot of talk about Peony being a crown type trainer. That could obviously come back to bite me. But let's hope that we don't battle him straight away as we did with our rivals in the Isle of Armor. So the first slot of my crown Tundra team does go to Cinderace. Coming up next for my second slot on my team for the Crown Tundra DLC is one of the Hoenn starter Pokemon, and that is Sceptile. Not going to bring Blaziken because we've already got a fire type, and I could use Swampert, but I don't really use Sceptile that much at all. Now, of course, there's still a little bit of information regarding potential Mega Revolutions coming back. Obviously, we don't know. Nothing's been said about that. All the items are obviously in the game, like in the data mind. Like, we can't get them, but all of the stuff's in the coding, so... It could happen. There's a lot of Pokemon coming back that can Mega Evolve, all that jibber jabber. But I'm bringing Sceptile back regardless. Sceptile is a really good Mon. It's fast. It hits hard. It's got a really, really good move pool. And I hope it's not the situation where they just give you one for free, just like the Bulbasaur Squirtle thing. I hope that we can find them in the wild because then you can shiny hunt them and stuff, get them with marks, all that good stuff that we love doing on streams. Uh, but Sceptile, you know, it's just a good grass type Pokemon. And also, there's barely any grass types coming back as well in the Crown Tundra. I think it's literally just Sceptile, Cray Dilly, I think, barring any like legendaries, which is only Verizion. And I don't even know if that's coming back. But uh, uh, yeah, not many grass types in the slightest coming back to the Crown Tundra. So I have Cray Dilly and Sceptile. Your boys go with Sceptile. But like I say, really, really good Pokemon. Super fast, hits hard. Uh, it's a good grass type. Never really get to use it. I usually just go with Mudkip or Torchic when I travel through Hoenn. So, bad time I showed some love to Sceptile. So, the second Pokemon on my team is going to be Sceptile. Coming up next and claiming the number three spot for my Crown Tundra DLC team is the pseudo legendary Pokemon Dragonite. Surprised it's taken this long to get Dragonite back in the game, but this Pokemon is back with a Bang! I love Dragonite. It's my favorite pseudo legendary. First ever Pokemon I got to level 100 as well, all the way back on Pokemon Red. So, you know, a little bit of, little bit of closeness of the heart with this Pokemon, but I just love Dragonite anyway. It's got a really, really good hidden ability. I don't know if I'll be able to get them in the game, um, and, unless I'll obviously have to breed and stuff like that. But just finding one in the wild, I love Dragonite. Such a good mon. And a lot of people sleep on it. I know there's other pseudo legendaries. There's Salamence, there's Metagross, there's Garchomp coming back. 
all really good choices, but everybody uses them. I always use them. I've used them so many times in the past. I want to use Dragonite. Haven't properly used Dragonite literally since Generation 1, because there's always just been a better pseudo legendary to use. I know everybody's going to be using Garchomp and Metagross and all that, but I want to use my mate Dragonite. So I'm going to be bringing him back with me. Plus, he's a flying type as well. Got that ground type immunity, which is going to be very nice if Peony is a ground type trainer, especially because he's going to want to destroy my Cinderace. So if my boy Dragonite comes in, He's going to obviously have that nice immunity. But uh, yeah, Dragonite does take the number three spot in my team. Coming up next and claiming the number four spot for my Pokemon Crown Tundra DLC team is Absol. Absol has just been one of my favorite Pokemon since it came out in Hoenn. It's just so, so cool. The look of it is insane. I know it doesn't evolve into or from anything, but it's fast. It has a very, very nice attack stat. Dark types as well. You know, there's not many decent dark types out there that I'm a fan of. Um, but Absol is definitely up there, top tier, and obviously if Mega Evolution does come back, like I say, if it does, don't know, we, we didn't know following Pokemon was coming back, it was a massive surprise, maybe Mega Evolution comes back, we don't know, I'm just saying, if it does, that's another extra reason for Absol to be on my team, because obviously it can Mega Evolve, as well as Sceptile, I know Dragonite can't, which obviously I've just spoke about, but I don't even care, I want Dragonite on my team, but Absol is going to be taking the number 4 spot, like I said, I'm just a massive fan of it, his move pool is so so good as well like it's, it actually learns so many different moves it's super broken and it's going to be super super useful um also gets like false wipe i'm pretty sure everything like that just in case i do need to catch anything for for the pokedex or whatever hopefully i find it pretty early on um i'm guessing i will but uh yes massive fan of absol does claim the number four spot in my team for the crown tundra dlc coming up next and claiming the number five spot in my team for the Crown Tundra DLC is a little bit of a strange one. And when I was sorting my team out, I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go with it. And that is Caracosta. Caracosta, however you pronounce it. I don't think I have ever used this Pokemon. It's not the best Pokemon out there, but I did need a water type. Obviously, Swampert's right there, but I don't want to cheat the system and have two starter Pokemon. Well, three actually, including Cinderace, but I don't want two of the Hoenn starters. It's just too easy. And I want to use Caracosta. I'm trying to use Pokemon I've never used before. And I know this Pokemon isn't the best thing. It does get Shell Smash and stuff like that, which obviously could be very, very handy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it early on because obviously it is a fossil. So maybe I will have to use a Mudkip or maybe a Sphil, because obviously Wall Reigns in the Crown Tundra. Maybe use one of those until I get the Caracosta coaster because maybe you have to go on like a fossil expedition to get them because there's a lot of fossils coming back being like aerodactyl the caracosta line the archaeops line i'm um, pretty sure kabutops amistar all that line's coming back so like i said a lot of fossils are back in the crown tundra so i feel like you won't be able to get that at the very very start uh, maybe you do maybe you don't i don't know but either way i want to use caracosta never really used one and it's not too bad it's not the worst pokemon out there i love the design of it as well the tatuga and caracosta really really cool pokemon but yes caracosta does claim my number five spot for my pokemon crown tundra dlc team finishing things off though as the last spot for my pokemon crown tundra dlc team is of course galarian slow king now this is also one that's kind of in the air because as we had with galarian slow bro we couldn't really evolve it until i'd done everything because the bloody twigs that you had to get was so difficult to find it took me like an hour to find eight and it was so annoying and, and a little bit boring, but we don't get up to that. I feel like Galarian Slowking is going to have the same kind of situation. And so if that is the case, I'm probably not going to be able to use it until I've beaten the Crown Tundra. So if that is uh, the case, then I might... I know I just said no legendaries. I might opt in for one of the Galarian birds. I feel like you're going to get those pretty early on before like the Regis and the Ultra Beast and everything like that. So I think Galarian Zapdos will probably be on my team. Very, very good typing. And... Uh, yeah, ju that's just because Galarian Slowking, I don't know if it's going to be able to get. I want to use the new Pokemon, uh, and obviously that's two of the brand new Pokemon. So if I can't get Galarian Slowking at the, like, the start or re like relatively early on, and I can get Galarian Zapdos, I'm going to go with Galarian Zapdos. I know I'm using a Legendary and like two stars, but my team's got to be all right. You know, There's a lot of Pokemon that are going to be difficult to beat with all the raids and everything. So yes, Galarian Zapdos does finish off my Crown Tundra team. But with that though, guys, it does wrap up today's video. I really hope you guys did enjoy it as much as I did making it. If you did enjoy it, 
please do drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 750 likes. Leave a comment. What is your team going to be for the Crown Tundra DLC? Um, I, I, I don't know. There's so many options that, you know, you can make a bloody bunch of different teams. Tell you that right now. Uh, obviously, subscribe if you're brand new. Going to be doing a whole Crown Tundra playthrough when, obviously, it does come out, whenever that is. Uh, so, yeah, subscribe for that. Ring the notification bell. Uh, that's everything from me. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, peace.